myself. I'm Hilary Phillips. I realise I don't have my name up there. Um, so I'm involved in um, helping lead on digital youth work at YouthLink Scotland. Um, YouthLink Scotland is a membership organisation, a lot of you will know us, um, membership organisation in Scotland for the youth work sector um, and um, many of you will belong to organisations who are our members, so it's great to have you with us today. Um, but today is not really so much about that, it's much more about the work that we've been doing together um, with um, Young STEM Leaders programmes. So we've got Claire here um, from Young STEM Leaders um, and um, um, we've got Stephen who's been taking part in a project that we've all been involved in. So I am just gonna um, slide share um, um, just just to sort of get us through the, the intros and then I'm going to hand to Stephen in a second or two. Um, so um, yeah, the, the, the workshop today um, has come about because of a small piece of work um, which basically was some grant funding from the Young STEM Leaders programme. Um, and that grant funding was to enable a little bit of exploration around what types of, of approaches would work for youth workers in relation to the Young STEM Leaders Programme. Um, and because at Youth Link Scotland, we had a real interest in helping to promote digital maker spaces, um, we, um, we pitched for a little bit of that money to, um, to run a project. Um, and um, what you're gonna hear about today is, is really kind of, kind of what happened um, within that project. Um, so there were, Two youth groups, two, two youth organisations. Um, so Stephen um, over at Universal Connections in Douglas um, and um, Ryan Mackay at, at the Citadel, um, both um, contributed to that, to that project. Um, and, and they'll tell you, or Stephen will tell you um, what happened in, down in Douglas. Um, and the young people from the Citadel are gonna share um, via a video um, about some of what happened at the Citadel. Um, and then um, Claire, um, who is both involved with um, the Young STEM Leaders Programme and with Paisley YMCA and is going to share a little bit around what, what they're doing. Um, in amongst all of that, there's going to be quite a lot of um, interaction and activity. So um, we're going to try and share with you something of what, it, what a digital makerspace is and what that means um, and how you might implement it as well as um, hearing what people have done. So um, ambitious as ever um, and we'll see how much of that we can actually deliver for you so um, without um, any more um, I do really I will stop my share um, and just hand um, to Stephen who's going to share his slides um, just now and get us quite quickly into what happened over um, at Douglas um, and um, how they tackled the business of setting up a digital makerspace. Right, hello everybody. Uh, so I'm Stephen Youngson. I'm the new team leader at the Universal Connections in Lanark, but I was involved in the Makerspace project down in Douglas up until recently. Uh, so what we're going to do to start with is going to show you one of the, the techniques that we use to get young people interested and uh, excited and coming up with the ideas for our Makerspace. So that was using a thing called InnoBox. You may have heard of it before. It's made by Verka, which was a, it's a Finnish youth service that specialise in digital youth work and its propagation. So it's like it's a really it's a, a tool for trying to like come up with a creative ideas and solutions to problems in your service, your program, your centre. And this is a, one of the sessions that I used with the young people whenever we were starting out. Uh, it was made by Ryan and Shona that are over at the Citadel who couldn't be here today. So giving them their uh, their props for the slides. And um, we'll just go on with the first one. The first thing, if I can click, there we go. The first thing is about mindset, right? So it's really about getting yourself in the right kind of mindset for coming up with innovative ideas. So if I go, go through it with you, so the first thing, the defer judgment. So we'll be having ideas and we want to make them better. Don't criticise each other. We'll have one conversation at a time. We're going to go for quantity over. Uh, so we want the most ideas possible. And then out of that, have wild ideas because every idea is valid at this point. We'll stay focused on the problem that we've got in hand and don't be afraid to be visual. So if you have, or if you can't 
say what it is that you're thinking, uh, feel free to draw it or represent it with whatever you have at hand. So with all that in mind, we'll go into what was the first session. We're going to put you into two small groups and give you five minutes. The first wee activity, a wee icebreaker for after lunch then, is in your groups. Please come up with 20 new uses for broken iPads. So I'll stick these into your groups. You'll we'll have five minutes to kind of get the mind going. And we'll see you in the, a wee minute. Let me just get the rooms going. Open all rooms. So click join. Get the timer started. So hopefully you've enjoyed that wee session there. Oh, I kind of jumped on a bit quick. Uh, yep, so I'm not going to ask you to, to feed back because that would take up the entire le length of the time that we've got left to talk to you today. Uh, so I hope that gave you a kind of wee feel for like what the creative process is like using InnoBox. If you're interested in learning more about that, the Verka website, V-E-R-K-E, -E, and it's InnoBox, I-N-N-O-B-O-X. Um, as I say, we used that with the Makerspace project right at the start to try and get the young people's minds fired up and uh, coming up with ideas on how we were going to actually use the Makerspace, what it would entail, uh, what sort of activities that they would like to take part in uh, throughout it. So, yep, that's, that was that was me presenting there at the beginning in Douglas and uh, uh, how it went. Yep, so it was a pilot Makerspace project through YouthLink. Uh, the young people that were involved in it, they were also going to do the Young STEM Leader Award within the non-formal level two. The young people that we got, we identified them through AstroPi. So AstroPi is a thing that's set up every year by the Raspberry Pi Institute. It's an opportunity to get young people to write code. Like they give you the specifics and then they can amend it. And that gets sent up to the International Space Station. And then on the International Space Station, their code is read out. The young people are then given a certificate and it shows them where the International Space Station was flying over at that point whilst the, uh, their code was being read out on board. So that was the young people that done that. They were interested in the STEM project. And then we got them involved, used the inner box. Uh, workshops. We've done about three or four weeks of that to get their creative uh, minds going, see what sort of things it was that they were wanting to be to be doing. The young people in Douglas had a real interest in design uh, and making things. Like Douglas was a, is a small rural village, it has really uh, quite a lot of unemployment due to the the factories all shutting down in 2009 after the, the financial recession back then. And uh, it was kind of like an idea of bringing a bit of that kind of um, work back into the area, but doing it themselves, like getting the kind of building jobs and the, the fabricating jobs back in there and they're getting a bit of experience about that. So one of the things then we've done was we used the STEM Ambassadors programme and we got an input from a guy called Ash Morris and his programme was called How to Build Concord. So if I next slide or show, there we go. That was then we've done a Zoom call with Ash and Ash showed them how uh, the, the design process is kind of similar, no matter what it is that you're building. He was talking about like you could build a toaster or you could be building a jet engine, which was the kind of stuff he was involved in designing. And it starts with the same sort of process. So over on here on the left hand side, this bit here, this was what they wanted to do uh, as part of their makerspace. They wanted to build an arcade. It's about a bit of legacy then for the centre. So they've done this project, they've made a makerspace, they built something with it and the other young people could use it in the centre. So this was their designs at the top. And this, uh, this bit here with the arcade and the kind of branching out, this was them using the design process that Ash had shown them how to do on the, the, the Zoom call. On the right-hand side, this is our makerspace, right? Douglas is a very small centre and we didn't have a lot of area, but it just kind of shows you that you don't need a whole big area or a, uh, to, to get people involved in it. Just a table, as we've got in the side of our room, and that's where we set up all our gear. We already had the computer, but we used some of the funding we got to get the, uh, the 3D printer at the back there and the graphics tablet so they could create things and design them on the computer. And one of the things that they ended up making then, as I said, they made an arcade cabinet. So they built this cabinet, they 3D printed all the stuff that's on the side, they designed the logos, they designed the, the bit where the, uh, the controllers are at the front there, and that was all made and, uh, in our makerspace and then built up and it's in the centre now for use. So how did we go about doing this? It really just was achieved through the same ways that you normally do youth work, the youth work competencies. We met the young people at the level at the Barat through that um, Astro Pi project. We built their confidence and self-esteem through doing the inner box and getting them to come up with all these creative ideas. We involved them in the learning process by involving them and letting them uh, like choose all the things that they were going to be using, what they were going to be making, what they were going to be building at the end. We gave them the opportunities to lead and succeed. 
which was part of the thing that we've done as well. It kind of grew a wee bit arms and legs from the Makerspace project and part of their youth, um, their Young STEM Leader Award. They done some uh, sessions with younger people that were coming in, the primary sevens as they were coming up. And they done uh, building a boat out of tin foil. They hold the most pennies. So the young people worked with the uh, primary sevens and then they built these things. And it was like a plan, do, review thing. They built one. They seen how many they can hold. They went away and amended it and tried to make it hold more. And then they've done that for another project as well with catapults made out of lollipop sticks, seeing how far they could fire uh, sweets. So it was like, it gave them that same that kind of thing of make th things, fix them, see how they come better. And then that kind of was also brought all together with a Young STEM Leader Award. And as of uh, this week, four of them have been put through for it. I'm just waiting on external verification. And uh, yeah, that was the Douglas project. Uh, I think we're keeping all the questions to the end, aren't we? So we can get through all the rest of our slides, Hilary. So I'll pass back to you. Thank you very much. Okay, that's, that's great. Thank you, Stephen. I find it really inspiring actually seeing the photographs there of um, the, the arcade cabinet that the young people created. Um, and I just think it's, it's, um, it's so interesting to see how um, that um, inner box process um, that enabled you to um, to work with the young people and for their ideas to kind of come up to up to the surface to bubble up to the surface and then actually to be realised. Um, and just to say as well that the the, the funding um, that Stephen was working with there from us was was just a thousand pounds that was available to use to buy some of that kit um, um, and the same for the Citadel. Now I'm going. What I'm going to do um, just now is I'm going to. Um, share a little bit of film um, which um, should um, kind of do a similar sort of job um, but this time for the Citadel project in Leith. So these were the two projects that were kind of like pilots for us to um, look at um, in to enable young people and youth workers to work together to get their Young STEM Leaders Awards, um, but also to explore how do you set up a digital makerspace in a youth work setting? What are the issues? What are the challenges? Does it work? Is it relevant for people? So those were the kinds of questions that we were sitting with. Um, and um, it, it's been amazing to just be part of that journey, if you like, and, and see what's um, come of it. Um, and um, uh, yeah, without further ado, I'll just play this video and um, let you could compare and contrast um, the two different projects. So um, how we got started with um, you know, our, our work in the Young STEM Leader Award, um, really we were quite lucky that we were approached by YouthLink uh, to run a pilot project. Um, it kind of interlinked at a really good time because we were also looking to develop some of our girls' work. Um, and obviously naturally STEM work um, and girls' work is a really important thing because there's not as many girls going into STEM subjects and STEM employment. The Young STEM Leaders, firstly, I think are really, um, you know, paramount thing to say is that it really works for us in the sense that there is a non-formal element um, and you know schooling in the formal side and the accredited section does have its place but for us especially when we're trying to put, put new groups into action you know during the summer and especially when it's only one activity of many that we deliver having that flexibility to deliver a kind of informal award at the lower level really suited um, us as practitioners but also importantly it suited the young people and where they were at a lot of flexibility a lot of um, easy use and just really it, it worked. I think that's the main thing for us. So. When we come to the Citadel, we play lots of stuff. We learn about science, technology, math, engineering and math. I think it's important for girls because it's a fun activity to do and it's so you can take part in lots of things. It made me more much more confident with like speaking to people, making friends. So we're going to be doing the art room up um, and we're going to have so much fun by doing 3D printing and we do loads of activities like drawing and there's loads of tasks and we all have some so much fun at the Citadel. The best thing is probably learning more new things that I've never known and stuff. When I'm at Citadel I like to put my like like make stuff and get into that all the activities and answer questions and all that kind of stuff. I love working as a team, it makes things better and it makes like more of a 
improvement in all our ideas together. I think the award so far has had a really, really positive impact and I think um, the main thing for me has been raising awareness to the girls that actually as a girl you can do what you want to do. Um, we were surprised a couple of the activities that we did initially that maybe some of the girls thought oh maybe I couldn't be an engineer or I couldn't be a scientist but once we started breaking that um, things down and having conversations there was almost uh, a bigger sense of relief, a bigger sense of confidence. We've done a lot of different things, there's been more te technological based things, we'll be looking at getting 3D printers and 3D printing pens, but then next week we're also going over to a wood woodworking space and we're going to be working with wood. So there's a lot of variety, but the great thing is all these activities, they all count towards it and I think that that's a big, a big plus for us, definitely. Okay, so great to hear there from um, Ryan Mackay and the young people um, at the Citadel of, about how their Makerspace project um, developed. And one of the things that um, strikes me is just how different those two projects are, um, actually. Um, and, um, you know, the, the things that are significant about the two projects um, are quite different. And I think all of that is a result of the youth workers actually working really closely with young people um, to explore their interests um, and to create something that is relevant um, to the young people. So um, really exciting to see that. Um, I'm going to hand to Claire in a minute or two, um, but just before we do, I would really quite like to just um, talk a tiny bit about the, um, the evaluation that we did as part of that project. So that was the bit of the project that was sitting with um, YouthLink. Um, and um, um, Jill Gracie, who's one of my colleagues, um, spent a bit of time thinking about the best way of evaluating this project in order to help us to understand both the benefits to the young people um, and the benefits, um, well, or, or the, the just, just how it worked for um, youth workers. Um, um, what they were getting out of it, what they were putting into it, and, and how all of that um, how, how all of that developed. Now there will be more to come on that, so we are writing that project up, um, and um, you know we've got materials um, that we will be able to make available and and share as a probably as a, a blog post or a paper, um, which we'll be very happy to share with you. But I've I've done a little bit of a, a summary um, of some of the key points that I think are particularly relevant around thinking about um, makerspaces and how you might um, set those up, why you would set them up um, and what matters about them. So I'll just share this one slide before um, I hand over to Claire. So makerspaces create a tan tangible focus for developing digital and STEM. Um, they enable um, young people to really see something, something physical, creating that space, I think is really um, important. Um, and um, there's a genuine excitement for them about the things that they create. So those would be sort of two of the, the kind of real key things for young people. Um, they, as uh, some of these points are, are probably similar to some of the things that, um, that Stephen's already said, but they um, create a, an atmosphere of collaboration, um, enabling youth workers and young people to um, build something together. Um, and it's been you know, fantastic to see um, those two examples of that. Um, we're, we're very aware that young STEM leaders, obviously that word leader in the, the title is really important. Um, and um, we are seeing fantastic examples in the makerspace setting of young people actually taking on um, leadership roles. Um, we're also seeing youth workers developing the confidence that they have. Now in both these cases, um, the, the youth workers were already really interested in STEM, interested in digital, um, aware of the possibilities. Um, and we know that there are um, still challenges around um, skilling up youth workers, getting them interested and getting them involved. Um, but certainly um, we think there's a, a sort of growing um, ability to connect with some of those issues there. Um, this next point about funding, where there's funding, young people feel valued and their ideas are validated. Um, so you saw with that, even that very small amount of funding available, um, it was possible for um, young people to create um, things that they were going to benefit from themselves. Um, so in um, at, at Douglas, it was a case of creating that arcade um, um, 
bringing together various things in the corner of a room um, for the Citadel. It was actually about transforming that art space that they already had into something different. Um, so I think together all of those things actually are showing us um, that there is an excitement around this area, there is a sense of building momentum at the moment, um, there's a sense of ownership um, sitting with the young people and also of um, co-creation I think with, within that um, thinking um, and there's a sense of transferring the responsibility from um, um, the adults in the space um, to the young people, which is just so important. So those would be sort of some of the key points um, that I'd want to make um, just in relation to the project. As I say, that's a little bit of a summary um, and there is a little bit more to come, which we'll be able to share um, as we go. Um, but Claire, I'd love to hand to you just now. Um, I know um, you've got an involvement both directly in um, the Young STEM Leaders Programme um, and in the fantastic, well-developed makerspace. So we've gone from kind of like micro and pilot to something that is actually quite um, um, a, a developed practice. So um, I'll just hand to you and let you say a bit more about your own work. Thank you, Hilary. Okay, so hi everyone. I'm just going to share my wee screen here. Can everyone see this okay? Oh, I've frozen. Great. There, your your slides still aren't up. You're you're definitely sharing your screen. Yeah, I'm going to try again. Just try again. Okay, I thanks. Mean, everything, everything was fine until I started sharing my screen. Let's try again. Okay. Did you see those there? I saw your thumbs up, Stephen, just as I clicked them away. <laughs> they, they came and then they went. Yeah. And, and if, if we do have connectivity issues, just you know, we'll, we'll, we'll figure a way around them. Um, I can share from this end if you need me to. OK, I think we can see it. Yeah, now. that's fine. OK, so let's go quickly before it starts uh, messing up again. So um, hi, everybody. I'm Claire McGinley. I've called this little section, What's Next? Um, as a youth worker um, and as all of you as practitioners, I imagine you're taking in all the information today and if you're anything like me, you're like, okay, that's great, what's next? What does it mean for my organisation? What does it mean for our young people? And, you know, what can we do here? So hopefully we can cover a little bit of that today. Um, okay, so a little bit about me. Um, I am a geek and I'm proud, which is why I've ended up in this world of uh, digital youth work. Um, in some circles I say tech enthusiast, but here I'm comfortable enough to say that I'm a bit of a geek. So I'm really passionate about any opportunity to raise young people's awareness and aspirations around accessing STEM. Um, in true youth worker fashion, I do have a couple of roles as well. So um, as Hilary said, I'm the Interim Youth and Programme Development Manager at Paisley YMCA. Um, I'm also an RTAV for the Young STEM Leader Programme, which is what we're, we're going to kind of combine those two things today, but really focus on um, the Young STEM Leader Programme and how it supports the, the work that we can all do around here. And yes, um, I really, really love digital youth work. So, uh, just gonna check. So, yes, Art have um, CERC love this. They really like putting things into letters. So, Art have stands for Associate Regional Trainer and Verifier for Young STEM Leader Program with CERC, who are the Scottish Schools Education Research Centre. Um, my role covers the kind of Renfrewshire West of Scotland area. However, I do have a remit to cover CLD across Scotland. Um, and we'll talk about that kind of at the end because I would really like you to reach out to me and, and have a bit of a chat around that as well. So um, let's not make it all about me chatting away. I want to hear from you and get a little bit of interactivity here. So. It's not massively exciting. It is a Google Jamboard. We could have gone a bit fancier, but 
thank goodness I haven't just now. <laughs> um, I'm going to share the link in the chat. Oh, Hillary has already done that. Thank you. Had it all ready to go. <laughs> okay, so if we can jump over to the Jamboards. Um, really, there is, there's a reason for this. Okay, so, and it's a, it is about how we can open up and, and we can remove some of those barriers. And one of the great things about being a youth work practitioner is that we have these really unique relationships with young people. And what I love about the Young STEM Leader Program is that sometimes we can reach young people that don't engage formally sometimes or academically in, in formal learning. And, and it's yeah, still... Can I Sorry, can I interrupt for a second? I think your Jamboard, you need to change the permissions for us. Oh. We're on view only. So you just need to, to give us edit access, I think. Yeah, I did. Let me just check that in here. Anyone with the link can be you. Oh, no, that's not gonna work. Okay. Been there, done that. <laughs> um. Right, let me just... Oh, always, it's always talent. I find Jamboards particularly actually trip me up on that one. Mm -hmm. Okay, well, let's just roll with it, okay? And we can use the chat or we can um, open up the conversation and just have a, a chat about it, which might be better. So really, yes, as I said, it's about opening up the conversation around digital and STEM. So something that we we encounter sometimes or we encountered even at our kind of digital makerspace is young people like STEM, that sounds that that's not really for me. I'm just here to play. Like what does that mean? So we have conversations around what's a household object that you can't live without. So does anyone want to volunteer? What even in the chat, or you can open your mic. I'd love to hear everyone else's voices. What is a household object that you can't live without? Oh, oh, very nice. <laughs> okay. Yes, absolutely. So we've got toilet, bed, fresh water tap, George Foreman grill, fridge, cafetiere. Yes, yes, Paula, the good coffee. Okay. Um, would anyone like to open the mic and say why they can't live without that? What 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 does it mean to you? <laughs> no. Okay. So if we think about, I'm just going to pick on someone here. That's just mean, isn't it? Is it wrong to say you're die without it? Absolutely not, Paula. No way. Like, I've actually been warned off the, the coffee today. I've just tried to stick to two or three cups. <laughs> but it's not wrong to say that at all. But what, what this is really good for is opening up the conversation. Okay, that's great. Did it just appear in your house one day? Obviously, we we bought those objects, but it's it's encouraging young people to think, where did that come from? What was the process behind that particular object? You know, someone had to think of it, someone had to invent it, someone had to design it. And obviously there's elements of engineering, there's elements of technology. So it's just a really simple, great way to have a conversation with young people about STEM and about how STEM is so accessible and it's around us every day. Um, and, and I find like conversations are just the best way to kind of start these these things. Yes, design thinking, Hilary, absolutely. We do a lot of that at the Makerspace and um, it's just a nice, easy road into talking about STEM with young people. So the other one was a bit a bit cruel. Um, and again, it's the kind of other conversation that, that we would have we kind of do the opposite and we say with young people, what jobs involve STEM? But I thought, I've got quite a smart group here. Let's see, what jobs can you think of that don't involve STEM? Is there anything? So science, technology, engineering, and maths. 
what absolutely does not have anything to do with STEM. Ooh, lollipop person, <laughs> Stephen. I, I disagree, Stephen, because a lollipop person is there to stop the traffic and the traffic um, is, you know, engineered by, you know, the lollipop people are at traffic lights and that's to do with, um, you know, engineering as well. Jamie, what about the reflective clothing? Love it, love it. You know, um, street mime. Oh my goodness. Okay. So street mimes, they, they're moving. They're, do they use music? Do they, do they move to nothing? You know, so it's, we, we could actually spend the whole session sitting kind of debating this and talking about it. But again, just a really fun, interesting way to, to get your minds going and, and have a little discussion about that. And the one thing that I am really, really passionate about is saying to young people, STEM is absolutely everywhere and it is for absolutely everyone. Um, it's for you. You belong in, in this world. And, and that's what's so good about the Young STEM Leader um, programme as well, because there's all different levels for young people to access and it kind of strengthens that relationship when we're working with them. I'll just go back to the chat and see what. Um, yes, absolutely. <clears throat> Kiara, STEAM. Yes. Uh, and we get a, a lot of young people kind of saying, what about the A? What about that? So, yeah. And, and the art and the artistic side of things can't happen without a creative design process as well. And yeah, it's all interlinked. Um, Jamie says, a non-STEM job is some kind of isolated mindfulness guru, someone who's completely disconnected. Okay. Okay. Maybe, maybe you won that one, Jamie. Um, you, you've seen questions beforehand, though. Maybe you were Googling that. Okay. <laughs> so, <clears throat> excuse me. Oh, oh. You, you keep that debate going in the chat, and I'll just chat away. I'm loving it. Okay. Um, so, I want to talk to you a bit about our makerspace at Paisley YMCA. Um, we developed our makerspace in 2018 so it's quite well established as as Hilary mentioned earlier on and really what we did was we kind of created this big bespoke space which was purely a digital makerspace you know we had everything 3d printers we had a laser cutter um, a retro gaming station a green screen room absolutely everything you could imagine um, and as part of that, at the time, we went through the Young STEM Leader Programme Pilot Project, which is how I got involved in this. And I have a group of STEM girls. And what they were most interested in was really the leadership element of the Young STEM Leader Award as well. So it was about building their confidence, thinking about their leadership skills. So they worked with a group of girl guides brownies and rainbows and took them through their digital challenge batch. They would visit the space every week and the girls would create little um, activities and interactions for them to take part in. And it really was as amazing and as simple as that. Um, I say was and we did have um, because our makerspace, we actually lost it in a fire last year. Um, and that's been really hard on our team, really difficult for our young people. But I love what Stephen said earlier on, and I'm really, really glad you said it, Stephen. And I'm really glad that you showed your, your table. That's your maker space, because we're starting again. And it's really made me think, you know, you don't have to wait until things are perfect. You don't have to wait until you've got this great big space to have a maker space because young people create and they'll, they'll do whatever they want to do in whatever space they have. So we're on that journey of redeveloping at the moment. But if you're thinking, well, how can I do that? You know, Stephen has just given us a perfect example of that. And I think maker spaces can happen in any space. So something to keep in mind there. 
Okay. Oh, here we go. Uh, this is a few pictures um, of some of the activity that happened um, when we went through the, the Young STEM Leader program. As you can see, we do like cake. I just think everything in life should be celebrated with a bit of cake. So uh, we have some young people that made a micro bit cake. I think you can see Amira and Mohammed there. We've got some STEM girl cupcakes here and also a lovely little picture of some of our STEM girls taking um, some of the, I think that brownies or rainbows through their digital challenge badge. So for us as a kind of youth work organization, going through the Young STEM Leader Program pilot project was, was just great. Our young people come to us because they're interested in digital, they're interested in, in STEM. And this was an award that just really, really worked for them and gave them an opportunity to explore their leadership and something that they were just really, really interested in. So it was lots of fun, as you can see, and we ate lots of cake. <laughs> Might have skipped past. So a little bit about the Young STEM Leader program. Um, it's it's just absolutely wonderful. So I'm I'm. I think I became involved with them because I was so excited about how good the project was for us and, and I'm really passionate about what it can do to support our youth work practice as well. So it is quite successful at the moment. We have over 600 delivering centres across Scotland and I've put that in there just to say that if you sign up for the programme, you're not on your own. So there's loads of people going through it. Um, as Stephen had mentioned earlier, there's non-formal and formal accreditation. So really that's about deciding with your young people what's going to be the best journey and, and thinking about yourselves as well in, in terms of time and capacity. Uh, it's really, really supportive. I have to say that there's excellent resources available there's always events that you can connect with other tutor assessors across the programme and support with training as well. And as I mentioned earlier, I am one of the RTAVs for CLD specifically, which means I'm on call. If you have any questions about the Young Student Leader Programme, if there's anything you want to find out more about or just chat through some ideas, I always get really excited about that side of things. So you're welcome to reach out to me. It is open to all young people across Scotland and that's something to keep in mind. So whether they're engaging in a kind of formal school setting or at a community level with us, it's open to absolutely everyone. And Stephen mentioned the STEM Ambassadors Scotland programme and they are just a wonderful group of volunteers that will support you with speaking to your young people, providing workshops, and uh, there's links at the end of this, which I will share, and you can have a little look at that as well. So it's kind of a whistle-stop tour, but really I'm kind of saying, come and have a chat to me, send me an email, um, and we can talk more about it. So uh, what are youth workers saying about the Young STEM Leader? program at the moment. We did some workshops recently and who doesn't love a word cloud? So I thought we'll share this little word cloud with you. Um, so they were saying it, it builds STEM confidence, not only within the young people, but within us as practitioners as well. You know, I think we wouldn't be youth workers if we didn't get excited about trying new things and exploring new ways of connecting with young people. So it's an opportunity for us to build that as well. It's engaging, um, encourages conversations, there's leadership opportunities, um, gives us an opportunity to discuss relevant issues as well. So I know that we talk a lot about fast fashion, about the circular economy, around about technology. So it's something different and it breaks down barriers. So again, whistle stopped her around 
how much fun it is. Um, I do love a chat that may have come across, but I was hoping to hear from, from everyone else on the jam boards. Um, that's my email address. Please reach out if you want to learn more about the Young STEM Leader Programme. If there's anything you want to know about our experience of delivering the awards or round about our makerspace at Paisley as well. And there's some links here, which I will share in the chat. But yes, I don't know if there's time for questions or anything, Hilary, or I pass back to you. Yeah, I, I think this is a really good moment for, for chat or questions. And um, basically the next, um, the next thing on our um, conference agenda is at three. Um, and the notion is that there is actually a little bit of space and time for you to go and get a cup of tea or whatever at the end of this. Um, but we can have a bit of a soft finish here, effectively. Um, so if people want to stay and chat for a wee bit longer, um, then they're welcome to. Um, but um, if, if folk have questions for um, either um, Stephen or for Claire, or even for me, then you're welcome to ask them. Um, I, I'm going to just, as, as folk are thinking, unless anybody's got a, an immediate one, I do have a, one other slide I want to share. Um, and, and it's just it's just a sort of short um, definition of a, a makerspace. So it's something that we put together from um, a number of different sources. Um, but I think um, here you will you'll see some really kind of key things coming through. So the idea of creating places where young people can be creative obviously sits really, really well with um, youth work and what youth work is all about. Um, and you'll see that there's skills development talked about in here. And you'll also see um, employment um opportunities and entrepreneurship and and stuff like that talked about about here um both of the examples today talked about 3d printers it was interesting that that was a a, a kind of bit of common ground as well so i'll i'll not go on sharing that at the moment but um again maybe pop that in, in the chat or um share it with people afterwards um and you know there is more there's more thinking okay um question craig do you want to just switch on and and ask or say it's great to have you with us, by the way. <laughs> yeah, happy to. I'm sort of sharing an office right now, which is why I've gone sort of dark. But um, yeah, we. I, I, my name is Craig Brown. I manage Digital Extra Fund, which supports extracurricular tech activities for young people. Um, we, we hired um, a community and grants officer this year who is quite involved with the um, STEM ambassadors and YSL program. So she's been really pushing it um, and promoting it to our to our grant recipients, which is brilliant. But I just sort of wanted to get other people's um, opinions on, on what was the best way for them to engage young people and get them to buy in basically to the YSL program. I think that's gonna be a clear question if you want to. Or we've also got, we're delighted we've got Jamie here today from YSLP as well. Um, Jamie's welcome to come in too. <laughs> Claire's trying to sit back, maybe not. Yeah. No, I'm just conscious that my, my Wi-Fi connection is still a bit unstable. Can you hear me okay? Yeah, we can hear you fine. Okay. So I really love that question. Um, again, I think the young people choose to participate. You know, there, there's no way that, that, that we can ever be like, hey, here's, here's this thing, like, you know, and Take, take part in it. So we've got to be creative as youth workers to be presenting an opportunity to them. But really it is a bit about laying the groundwork. So knowing your young people, having that relationship with them and just finding out what they're interested in. And then, you know, approaching the subject with them. Really, really that's what we did. You know, my whole thing with STEM girls was really about building their confidence and saying, you know, this this is a world you belong in. You're really good at that. So it was okay. We're we're doing all these activities. How about you get recognised for the work that you're doing, which which is really important. And young people, who doesn't love a certificate? I still love a certificate. Um, young people really like to feel validated as well, and and the work that they're doing. So I think it's it's just about showing that the Young STEM Leader Award does add value 
to what they're already doing and it shows that they're they're valuable so that's well, kind of not a, a total example Craig but it's that's kind of how we did it does that help at all it, it does it makes sense what you're saying I think everyone likes recognition for their hard work um um, and I think it makes sense to do it through something that's already established. I guess I was more, and maybe it's not directly related to YSL, but we're always trying to help our grant recipients increase their engagement. So I guess using the Young STEM leader as an incentive to do that is, is one way, but I guess I was more meaning, meaning in general, what are some strategies you've used to maybe engage young people in STEM initially when, especially as it was said in the video there, you know, girls and young women, don't always view it as like the funnest or coolest thing. So what strategies do you do to, to use to get them involved in the, initially? Well, it's like, especially see when it comes to like, if I'll jump in with a bit like with the other ones, I used it as a kind of uh, employability thing. Like it was like an extra kind of thing, you know, like th there's awards like the Duke of Edinburgh and stuff like that and they're nationally recognized. This is accredited, that's getting recognized as well. So it was something else that they could add into like their CV. Uh, when that was, what was the other bit that you asked there? It was a bit like, what was that second part that you asked there, Craig? Because that was the first thing I was asking the second part that I thought it's done for as well. Just like, um, how do you get young people interested in STEM to begin with? All oh, right, that was the point, right? So like, what, especially some of the things that we use, it's like in, it's like showing that it's embedded in everything. So for example, like um, the Makerspace stuff that we've done when they've done the 3D printing, now that they're using the 3D printing for the strategy game group, they're making things uh, that can like either hold their cards or like terrain for um, uh, Warhammer and things like that. They're building that, they can make their own stuff. So it's like, then uh, like if you've ever done stuff like tinker card or anything like that with them, they can then like turn the things that they can actually make the things themselves and then print them out. Then we've, in here in, in Lanark, what they've done so far with the bit that we've tried, uh, we've done, um, it's through arts and craft. Like they're really, like there's a lot of arts and crafty kind of projects going on. So they were using the 3D printer to make the things that they were then going to want to go and paint. So it was about just kind of integrating uh, STEM in the activities that they're already doing and then kind of getting them an interest to then try and take that further and engage in different activities as a result. Did I jump in? I, I, I work for the Boys Brigade in Glasgow. Uh, and but have a sort of responsibility for about 50 different units and I volunteer with two different groups. But one of the conversations we had with a group two weeks ago, so I'd followed on from uh, one of the boys saying he'd watched the programme inside the factory and spotted how you make what PVC wellies. And then we showed the clip and they, got, they just couldn't comprehend the size of the equipment and almost the sort of not the archaic design, but the fact that somebody actually set that up. And then you start that conversation into even things like how do you make plugs? How do you make cables for your iPads? You know, somebody's got to come up with that technology, but then try and build a program around that first initial engagement that you know, we've got a lot of resources that, that we, we can use uh, but it's trying even to get, and I was thinking that we should cascade it down to the groups, but I'm now thinking more that we need a central makerspace to get the ones that don't have the opportunity at their local group, whether just by the fact that the leaders don't have the skills themselves and are unlikely to develop those skills, but it would still give the, the, the young people the opportunity to gain the informal award. Yeah, that's a really interesting point, um, Jim. And I think some of that kind of maybe happens a bit informally. You know, certainly there's quite a number of people looking to YMCA Paisley as a bit of a, a kind of centre of excellence in Scotland. And, you know, they've they've had an amazing um, role to play in, in helping other youth workers um, 
sort of skill up and that kind of thing. Um, and one of the exciting things now is that there is actually some rollout of other maker spaces within YMCA. There's some money from World Health Organization that's enabling another couple of maker spaces to get set up um, elsewhere across Scotland. Um, so, so that sort of sense that there are going to be places that you can go to to actually get these skills, I think that's coming. Um, there's also there's a new um, um, cyber quarter developing in Dundee, which is basically a, you know, it's it's a business space, but at the same time, funded by Scottish government, and there's interest in, um, you know, kind of how can that business space support young people. So there's there's what's called a dirty hack lab as part of that um, new new centre there. And what goes on in a dirty hack lab? Um, well, I kind of know, but kind of don't know. <laughs> yeah, be interesting to find out more. Yeah, thanks, Jim. That's great. Um, anybody else with a burning question they want to ask? If not, then I think we are going to wrap up. Um, it's a bit ten to at the moment. We've got um, a panel session, just a, a sort of half hour final session back on the, the main Zoom call. Um, so it'd be great to see folk over there. Um, and, and Darren Gillen, who's um, been involved, well, been leading the, the YMC Paisley um, Makerspace until quite recently, but is now digital lead for YMCA Scotland, um, is going to be on that panel. So you might hear a little bit more about some of this um, development from him. Um, but can I just say a huge thank you to um, Stephen and Claire um, for taking time today um, to lead us through the work that they've been doing. Um, and also just to say that, that actually that whole business of exploring with, with a couple of particular organisations, what how does a makerspace work within the youth work setting has been really, really interesting um, and, and one that we hope will actually create um, you know, a bit of momentum and a bit of excitement. Um, yes, we're aware, aware you know, there's needs for skills, um, um, there's, there's need for actual you know, practical resources um, and um, there's also lots, sort of lots of thinking going on at the moment about how we do all of that. So, so thank you everybody for contributing to, to that session. And um, yeah, if you do have other thoughts and ideas, please keep in touch and let us know. <laughs>